Hi, I'm Melissa from Welcome to the Woods and welcome back to another This or That DIY. In this video, I'm going to compare the different types of nailers. If you are researching your first nailer or deciding what nailers to get, this is the perfect video for you. I'll bet that you have decided you're either going to get a brad nailer or a finish nailer and I'm going to go into the differences between them. Now, the most common and most inexpensive nailers are pneumatic nailers that hook into an air compressor. And for the first how many years that I did DIY, I only used this guy, this little brad nailer, and this has a quick connect to an air compressor. So you load the nails in here and then it comes out right here. And the air in the air compressor gives it the oomph that it needs in order to push that nail through the material. While nailers that hook into an air compressor are the least expensive, I would argue that they are not the most beginner friendly. This is my air compressor with its long hose and plug-in cord. So not only are you limited by your cord, you have to have you know power somewhere, but you also are limited by your hose. This can really get in the way when you're working with your nailer. The connections on the hose up here and down here can sometimes get loose and the hose can pop off causing you to have this terrible screeching noise and lose all your air pressure. That is just terribly inconvenient. The other major inconvenience is that the hose can get tangled and kinked. It's really in your way, especially for projects like on the ceiling. That's actually why I purchased my cordless nailers recently because I was going to be redoing our living room ceiling and I knew that a nailer hooked into an air compressor would be very difficult to work with. Not only that, but the air compressor makes a very, very loud noise as it runs and it can turn off when the tank reaches pressure. So it will like randomly turn back on as you're using your nailer. It always startles me <laughs> when it turns on and off like that. I hated that and I love that with my cordless, na cordless nailers, I don't have that loud noise. So for all those reasons this year, I recently got a set of rigid cordless nailers and I often go with rigid brand when buying tools because of their lifetime warranty, even on the batteries, when you purchase through the Home Depot. This nailer and this nailer surprisingly use the same gauge of nails. Um, so it's not about the size you know, of the nailer. You just have to figure out when you're purchasing it what type of nailer it is. Brad nailer, brad nailer. Brad nailers use 18 gauge nails. So 18 gauge are the skinny smaller ones and they're typically used for trim work and finishing work. They're too thin and not strong enough for actually joining materials together in construction. So they're really just for lightweight projects. Now the other rigid nailer that I purchased is my finish nailer and this uses a 16 gauge. So I wanna talk about that now. Finish nailers include 16 gauge and 15 gauge nails. And finish nailers are okay for lightweight construction for instance, when I recently constructed the bow beams in my living room, I used one by sixes and I ended up just nailing the boards in a butt joint together. I didn't use wood glue or anything and they've held up beautifully. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I also use one by fours on my trim work around my house. And because of the thickness of the one by fours, I prefer to actually use my finish nailer when installing these onto the wall. I want to give you a couple examples of where I would use a finish nailer versus a brad nailer. So say I was going to replace the thin MDF backing on a dresser. I would use a brad nailer with very short brad nails. Say I was going to install quarter round on the edge of my flooring. I would use a brad nailer. Now imagine that I'm creating a simple box that's not going to get heavy use. like the beam box as I built or the mantle that I did recently. I would use a finish nailer. In fact, almost any project where I'm planning to fill the nail holes anyway, I put together with a finish nailer if I can because the nails are stronger and bigger. With a brad nailer, people prefer it for trim work because on stained trim, the nail holes are so small that you don't need to fill them. But in my house, I have painted trim. And so even when I use my brad nailer to install trim work, I still fill and paint them. So I just end up using my finish nailer because the bond where I nail the trim work into a stud 
is much stronger. I want to show you a close-up difference here between the gauges of nails. These are the two I purchased because they fit my guns, but you can go to the store and see there's a multitude of gauges. A 16 gauge is actually bigger than an 18 gauge. That brings me to framing nailers, which I don't own, but framing nailers take the lowest gauge of nails. So they can take like 11 to 8 gauge nails and they're very large. These are meant for heavy duty construction, like framing a house or putting together a deck. I personally haven't felt like I needed a framing nailer because if I'm working with nails that are that big, I can knock them in by hand with a hammer. Now, obviously, if you work in construction, you just don't want to waste the time doing it that slowly. But I feel like a brad nailer is the one that a lot of homeowners purchase and have really as their first nailer because they maybe want to install trim work and that would be incredibly tedious to knock in that many tiny little nails across a room or what have you. A reason that you would use nails in framing or building over screws is that nails have a little more give and take. So especially for like framing a house where a house settles over time and moves slightly, um, you're going to want a nail because it has some give versus a screw, which can be very brittle. When you see a nailer that has a slant right here, instead of having like a straight loading path for the nails, it's so that you can actually toenail it in. Um, and that's most typical on a framing nailer, um, but sometimes on finished nailers as well, they'll have it at an angle. Um, a toenailed nail is stronger because it goes in at like a 45 degree angle. There you go. I think I covered everything. Now you know the difference between pneumatic nailers and cordless nailers, and you know the difference between a brad nailer, finished nailer, framing nailer, and I'm gonna do another video soon teaching you how to use your nailer. So I'll go through loading the nails and the adjustments you can make on the gun um, as well as like maintenance. My channel is all about DIY. And so if you want to learn more and be inspired by what I am working on in regards to home improvement, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel or follow my page. And if this video was helpful for you, then leave a comment below letting me know. Thank you for watching this episode of This or That DIY. We'll catch you again next time on Welcome to the Woods. This is just one of many videos in my series of This or That DIY. I've done videos comparing drills like the inexpensive drill I started with versus my more fancy drills and my impact driver from Rigid. And I've done other tools like your Craig jig, I kind of go over the benefits of the tools and then how to use them in some of these videos. Watch all my other this or that comparison videos by following the playlist on my YouTube channel.